Welcome back to this course, Issues in Bioethics. This is a mod, uh, unit five of module three. For uh, this unit, we'll focus on the theme, ethics of care, gender concerns, and feminist perspectives. So when we discuss the theoretical frameworks of ethics, we have left out the ethics of care. I did that because I thought we can uh, discuss it when we discuss gender concerns. So I'll try to do this by uh, outlining some of the fundamental concerns of uh, ethics of care and then try to see how this, uh, this actually emerge from the context of uh, certain gender concerns which have become prominent, particularly in the uh, 20th century with uh, the feminist perspectives becoming important. So this is what this uh, lecture is trying to address. So when you try to uh, understand from the very outset what is this care perspective in ethics? We can see that it is advocated by the feminist ethicist. And uh, it is primarily addressed two things. Number one, to criticize, critique and criticize the available theoretical frameworks which have originated in the European tradition. And the prominent ones are, we have already seen the deontologism and uh, utilitarianism. There are certain things common about these two theoretical frameworks and many others which have emerged in the Western tradition. Many others like uh, even relativism and many others. There are, though there are, uh, I have taken the examples of uh, utilitarianism and deontologism because they are the most prominent perspectives which have uh, uh, emerged after enlightenment. See, there are certain things common about these two perspectives that in spite of uh, the differences, the very important differences, they both are very rational. They both try to present a rational view. And according to them, uh, it's very important to adopt an impartial attitude. See, for, for instance, uh, for uh, utilitarianism, the ultimate criteria to decide what is good is uh, utility, the maximum good for the maximum number of people. So let us imagine a situation where uh, two people have met with an accident and you can save only one of them. And one is your close friend, the other one is a very famous cardiac surgeon. So you can save only one of them. Take it as uh, say suppose both of them have fell into the water and you can save one of them or they are in another some other kind of a danger. Now what will you do? If you save your friend, you are giving importance to your emotional considerations, your relationship with the friend and many other factors which are non-rational. But if you decide ultimately to save the surgeon who is in no way related to you, but you give importance to certain other considerations like the surgeon can save the lives of uh, many other people. And uh, as far as utility is concerned, the surgeon has more utility than your close friend. So if you are a utilitarian, ideally you should save the surgeon and uh, allow your uh, friend to die, which is a very complex situation, I know. I am not going to say that one has to do this or do that. But the rational um, principle of utility never allow you to uh, consider the other option, that saving your friend, giving importance to your relationship, your emotional uh, link with your friend. The feminist ethicists were trying to uh, invite, they, they in fact urge us to look back to these aspects because they are so central to our moral considerations as human beings. So they would say that what is more important to be treated when it comes to morality are emotions, love, friendship and of course the context of relationship in which we are placed in. But at the same time we should also keep in mind that they are not telling us that you should confine yourself to your close relationships. They would rather urge us to expand the field of our relationships to from our very close friends and family members to a community and from there to possibly to the entire humanity. The important point uh, according to them is to give importance to the aspect of care and concern for other people, which they believe is so central for all human being. Now, the very central principle is this, that our relationship gives us obligations to parents, friends, children, etc. I have given, cited two, two, three examples like this because they are quite obvious that uh, my relationship with my parents are not just 
a very external kind of a relationship, but they are so linked up with a set of obligations, mutual obligations. But at the same time, seen from my perspective, I have certain obligations to them. I have certain obligations to my friends and children and uh, friend and other people who are associated with me, all my companions. So, my relationship is not based on certain calculations or certain very objective rational principles, but they are obviously based on the a, a, a network of relationship in which I find myself. So, this is uh, probably the central theme. We have obligation towards those particular persons with whom we have specific and valuable relationships. So, the most important point here is valuable relationships or relationships are valuable. And what is this, how do you uh, respect this value of relationship? We respect this value by means of care. We have care, we care for them, we care for other people. So, there are different types of care which we will discuss uh, slightly later. And morality calls for attending and responding to good of particular individuals whose companionship we value. So, there is of course, one can ask, you, you say that there is uh, this reference to the companionship of people whom we value. So, only to uh, the people whom we value. Uh, we do not have to confine ourselves to that, we can actually expand our uh, domain of value. We can expand it to other people as well, who are even strangers and gradually to the community and all which I have already mentioned. So, what makes uh, the care perspective in ethics important is that, they are actually inviting us for to inviting us to deviate from the existing paradigm, which are so prominent in the European tradition, particularly the post enlightenment European tradition. So, uh, it is very important to understand the feminist criticism in this context, at least some uh, picture about the feminist criticism and its importance in uh, our society, in our intellectual tradition today. So, feminist criticism of healthcare provisions, practices and policies, they introduce new perspectives to understand and assess the situation in a better manner. So, they are probably we can argue that they are trying to argue or they are pointing out something which we lack, something which we have neglected, the care aspect, which is so central no doubt. Now, before we really get into the care uh, perspective, we will uh, just have a look at the feminist critical reflection and its importance. So, what the feminists have done is that the feminist critique or criticism is against the intellectual traditions and social institutions of the West. They have scrutinized it and they were trying to see how just these criticism, these uh, uh, traditions are or how fair these traditions are. Uh, towards women and in that way attaining a balance. So, bioethical issues have surfaced as concerns of certain institutions which were male dominant. So, when it uh, comes to specific uh, issues, see for instance, uh, many of the bioethical reflections have uh, originated basically from two uh, disciplines. One is medicine, the practice of medicine of course. But the other one is we have the resources, we have the intellectual resources to develop bioethical reflections in disciplines like philosophy, law, um, then uh, uh, political science, economics and various other disciplines, sociology and all that. So, the feminist try to point out that how these disciplines by examining the historical evolution of these disciplines, they try to point out that how they are emphasizing more and more on uh, the male concerns or how they are male centric and quite insensitive to the concerns and uh, needs and requirements of women. And they are in that way they construct themselves as rational objective and impartial uh, institutions and views and such views are idealized from the very beginning we can see this from the very beginning of the intellectual tradition in the west this rationalization the emphasis on objective impartial views are quite visible. And as we have seen these are all disciplines which uh, focus the male, but not the female, uh, not uh, the women and women's view were uh, re uh, rarely considered by many of these disciplines. Now, it would be interesting to see a little bit of historical evolution of uh, the feminist uh, criticism or the feminist perspective. At some point of time the feminists have started distinguishing 
gender from sex. Of course, this distinction itself is questionable nowadays, but it would be interesting to see how they have evolved. So, gender is a technical term which refers to the social elaboration of a biological difference between male and female. So, in that sense it is not just a biological category, but it also bears the social and political and economic uh, implications. And uh, uh, so, sex on the other hand is a biological category more or less. So, the feminist in that sense here in this context by introducing such important distinctions they question the social differentiation of masculine and feminine individuals in terms of roles, behaviors and psychological traits which have been there in the European tradition from its very beginning and which was so central to the European intellectual tradition. This categorization of uh, roles, uh, the masculine and feminine on the basis of roles and behavior. And many uh, as I mentioned do not subscribe to this uh, distinction between sex and gender today, today because it uh, fails to recognize according to those people uh, many important nuances that determine the distinction between men and women. So, we cannot just understand this distinction between men and women by making gender or making gender prominent in our discourse. We need certain other forms of criticism as well. Now, again to understand the practice and institution of healthcare with a focus on gender differences becomes relevant for us because this would probably explain how unjust approaches and practices creep into the distribution of healthcare and its access. So, these two distribution of healthcare and the access of healthcare are very important as far as the question of justice is concerned. If it is not fairly distributed or if access is denied then there is injustice in the system. We all talk about uh, unfair distribution and injustice lack of access and various other issues that prevail in uh, the healthcare sector. But it would be interesting to see what are the other factors which make these injustices look as slightly different or rather to look into such injustices from different perspectives. So, the gender perspective, the gender dimension uh, provides us a very interesting perspective to understand this whole notion of fair distribution and healthcare and its excess. So, we can also in that way understand properly how oppressive structures deny them to women. In the society there exist certain oppressive structures, the feminist criticism is trying to bring out these op oppressive structures and uh, show us how they deny certain very important things to women certain very important facilities to women, how power relations operate in healthcare institutions and uh, practices. And it invites attention to the political and social context of the moral issues relevant in the practice of medicine. What the significance of uh, gender perspective in uh, bioethical reflections uh, would try to uh, tell us. I am just trying to summarize the views put forward by Jan Tosweit in her article gender and bioethics which appears in that uh, Cambridge companion. So, what she says is that there are several aspects she tries to bring out. The first one is gender inequality and discrimination in profession. This is from the very beginning rampant quite rampant in the profession of medicine where traditional medi uh, western stereotypes of femininity and masculinity function as women to care and men to cure. So, this we can see the roles of women are more or less confined to giving care nurses by on the other hand doctors most of the physicians are male their uh, fundamental responsibility is to cure. So, some more importance is given to the aspect of cure rather than care which is actually an unjust imbalance that exists in the system. Now, again uh, when it comes to exploitation and abuse of women patients which is also quite rampant in the profession and women may receive a lesser quality of healthcare than men with similar conditions. So, we can cite a lot of examples to uh, um, strengthen this argument. Then again the most important one probably from certain other perspectives would be this that the failure of respect not being taken seriously as authorities on their own experience and preferences because on most occasions in certain context women are understood as creatures who lack autonomy. 
So, their decision making is done by others. On certain occasions, on many occasions husbands or fathers or mothers or other people. Though we talk about autonomy a lot in medical ethics. Not being properly informed about their condition and treatment options. This is also because we do not respect the autonomy of women. We do not recognize that they are autonomous uh, beings. Again and generally not being accorded the rights of uh, competent adults to decide about their own health care. So, these are some very important problems that women might face even today in uh, the practice of medicine. Bioethics is concerned with the issue of patient autonomy and power imbalances between patient and physicians, but not about the relevance of such issues in the context of gender differences. As I mentioned, one of the fundamental concerns of modern bioethics this uh, power imbalance that uh, exists between physician and uh, patient. So, because there would be such a, an imbalance of power, there is possibility of coercion and exploitation, which needs to be very urgently addressed. And uh, principles of autonomy and various other principles are devised for this sake. But the problem is that uh, these issues actually acquire a new dimension and certain new depths if you try to understand and approach them from a gender perspective. Or rather to put it in other words, gender differences add to this. They give a different dimension to the entire problem of power imbalances and autonomy issues. But unfortunately, these aspects are not being discussed elaborately by bioethicists. Another one is bioethicists never dealt with unethical experimentation on women including the therapeutic use of drugs which have not been adequately tested for effects on women. So, there again the agency of women were not treated properly and also the respect for person is also not honored as far as women is concerned. So, their safety is under stake under such circumstances. And then when it comes to research, there is a gross underrepresentation of women and there is a tendency to exclude them from studies concerning illnesses which affect both men and women. And it is quite interesting to also note that certain medicines will have certain other impacts on women or certain diseases manifest slightly different ways in the case of women. And women also face certain diseases or certain peculiar health conditions which are not faced by men. So, no proper research is done or their representation of women in research is much less compared to men. So, these are these actually call for a lot of concern from the side of society and women's health issues are seen essentially as related to reproduction. This is another thing a stereotyping of women whenever there is a mention to women it is reproduction a reflection of a long tradition of identifying women their reproductive biology. So, this is another very gross injustice done to women. The intellectual traditions as a whole of the West, which includes the scientific and philosophical traditions and also other political, social and economic traditions of the West. The feminists were trying to develop a unique perspective, which would reflect some of the concerns, some of the gender concerns and concerns of injustice done to women in various societies particularly in the western society. Because in the western society that uh, what I mean by particularly in the western society is that in the western society these ethical reflections which became prominent by the first half of uh, 20th century, they give a lot of importance to the individual as we have already seen the concern is the individual to protect the individual from the coercion, from uh, exploitation, from suppression and injustices done to them from by others. But at the same time, the concerns of women are hardly addressed. So, a lot of oppression and injustice are inflicted upon women by the social structures that exist. I do not mean by men, but the social structures that exist, which is created by both men and women. Of course, the situation in other cultures are also a matter of concern or rather more a matter of concern than some of the western societies, because in other societies in particularly in India and all the situation of women is rather more pathetic than compared to the European countries. So, when we try to understand the care ethics perspectives, we need to uh, situate it in the context of other moral theories. 
the prominent moral theories are I am just taking up in this context are virtue ethics, utilitarianism and deontologism. There is a reason for that virtue ethics has originated as you know in the ancient tradition, the ancient Greek tradition and deontologism and utilitarianism are post enlightenment theories. But among these theoretical frameworks we can see that the virtue ethics framework is much closer to the um, framework of uh, care ethics because there is an emphasis on character on both. But of course, this emphasis they do in different ways. So, it is very close to virtue ethics because the emphasis on some virtuous character traits such as compassion because one of the important aspects of care ethics is the idea of compassion, the idea of empathizing with the other person and you can empathize with the other person only with compassion. So, it is antithetical to the utilitarianism and deontologism which are rational theories which are post enlightenment ethical theories which emphasize a lot on impartiality in moral judgments and universality of moral rules. You have seen that the concept of rule universal rule is so central in deontologism utilitarianism urges you to be impartial as much as possible. So, the universality the objectivity the impartiality aspect of these uh, theories are quite objectionable for the care ethics perspective. Such principles stressing impartiality are irrelevant and vacuous according to them and uh, they are of course, rational care ethics emphasizes compassion and love which are non rational. Why do you love a person? There is no reason why you love a person according to them. Why do you care for another person? Because there is a lot of compassion and love. But then why do you have compassion and love? Why do you empathize with another person? There is no answer to that question. You cannot rationalize your empathy with the humanity. You feel very concerned about uh, certain people for example, this refugees, the Syrian refugees in Europe and other places. Why do you feel uh, compassionate about them? Why do you feel concerned about them? There is no answer to that. That is something which is so fundamental to our being human that we care for others. As far as the rational frameworks of utilitarianism and deontology are concerned though they might help us in certain situations, but in general they are ineffective as far as our moral life is concerned. Day to day moral life is concerned we have to we face we encounter problems very concrete problems which involve people and their issues. So, you cannot really try to approach these issues from the perspective of these rational theories which emphasize on impartiality they fail to see the value of concrete relationship. The example which I have mentioned your close friend and a great scientist both of them facing a danger and you can help only one person. If you are a utilitarian you might have to help the scientist, but if you value compassion and love and friendship you may opt the other one. What would be the right perspective? Fail to acknowledge the virtuous virtues of character traits like compassion, love, sympathy, fidelity, friendship etcetera. See just one question what would be life without these ideas without these experiences of love, compassion, fidelity, friendship etcetera. Life will be very dry and very boring for all of us. So, since we value our life since we consider that there is a lot of meaning in living what adds meaning and value to life are these things compassion, love and friendship and other forms of relationship. Now, again the unique perspective of care ethics tries to see the moral life and the moral self essentially from the context of relationships. So, there is no autonomous uh, rational self as it was uh, advocated by uh, the deontological frameworks or there is no calculating rational self as it was understood by the utilitarians. The self is not a rational abstract entity an autonomous entity. The self will always find itself in the context of a network of relationship with other people. And when you talk about relationships, relationships are not just based on contracts as a social contract theorist would argue relationships are always linked with emotions and passions and compassions and empathies and other things. So, moral decisions are not always purely rational decisions which people make on the basis of uh, cost benefit analysis. They are not independent of concrete situations or uh, 
life where people are involved, but we make decisions based on all these concrete factors taking into account of emotional and other factors uh, also. So, the care perspective in that way is uh, urging us to look back to the aspect of care, which we are increasingly losing when we emphasize on aspects like rational self and autonomy of the self. Care is a basic human capacity. It is a natural capacity to empathize with others feelings, emotions, sufferings and needs. It is something which is so basic to all human beings. So, in that way again it is very close to the virtue ethics framework, which also talks about human nature. Here there is the reference is not human nature, but to a fundamental human capacity, which we can see even among small kids. As far as children are concerned, small little children are concerned, we do not consider that they are autonomous. Their autonomy is yet to be manifested in them. They are not fully rational, but at the same time we can find the care aspect present in them that if you see one child crying, another child will also start crying, which is one way in which the child exhibits its care towards the other child. We understand and respond to the needs of others. So, this is what is so fundamental to care, a concern for others and responding to the needs of other people. We regulate ourselves as we are aware of the fact that our, our behavior affect others. So, we know that each of our behavior will have an impact on other people. So, we know this when we behave, when we talk and when we act and we accordingly regulate our behavior. All moral considerations emanate from this aspect that we care for other people. We know that our actions will have certain impacts on other people's life. So, we accordingly regulate it. So, that is the fundamental moral considerations we have, which is rooted in the idea of care. And we have natural urge to help others, this natural basis for care shapes our moral perspectives. Now, the moral perspective based on care is for doing the right thing, recognizing the right action and it is not just to people close to us, but to expand this include larger systems of relationships and communities. So, this is what I said, if you when you emphasize on relationships, very close relationships like family relationships and friendships. Does it lead to a kind of parochialism, where we are confined to our own small little world? The care ethicist would argue that there is always a possibility that we can expand the domain, the border of our relationships to other people as well, to our community or communities and to the entire human community. So, that possibility is there rooted in our very nature. So, let us now uh, see what are the forms of different forms of caring. There are basically three types of caring we are concerned with, when we care about something or after someone or for someone. Out of the three, we are directly concerned about the care which is for someone. The care ethicists are not concerned about the other two types of care, about something where you care about some object. There is towards certain objects or ideas you have some care. So, which is not a very personal kind of a care and when it comes to care after someone, here uh, the best example we can cite is an officer has uh, care, he cares for his subordinates, which is a very formal type of a care, which need not be personal. So, that care can be executed in a very objective manner as well. But the other one, the ethically relevant kind of a care which we are talking about is care for someone where we refer to the care which the mother has for her child. That is the best example for uh, this kind of care, which is ethically relevant. Here, she does not expect anything back from the child. There is a unconditional absolute care for the child. Here, the care is directly focused on persons and not on things. So, it is a very personal kind of a care, which is so intimate to the person who cares. And the objective of this care is uh, not to make not to foster dependency, but to make that person independent, nurtures development of that person. For example, when I care for my son, my objective is not to make him dependent on me, but rather to make him independent, to make him an individual who would be capable of making his own choices in life. So, this is a higher kind of care uh, which 
ethicists are concerned with according to uh, care ethicists. And now let us conclude, we will see the kind of relationship which ethics of care has with bioethics, in what way this would be relevant. Because bioethics as we know is, uh, it deals with the domain of medicine, the practice of medicine. And here the care ethicist should urge that we should be sensitive to the emotional and other non-rational elements. Because there are a lot of things which are non-rational, when you, even when you take a decision, even the process of decision making in a, a typical clinical context is not necessarily a rational process, because there are a lot of other emotional factors, economic factors, social and cultural factors, religious factors, everything is involved here. So, to care for another person is not just to be absolutely rational. It is also to be sensitive to his emotional self, to the person's emotional aspects and other aspects which he or she considers constitute his being. So, one has to be sensitive to the emotional and other non-rational elements present in clinical context and decision making situations. And here sensitive to the vulnerability and loss of autonomy people experience. In a typical medical condition, this is quite rampant that people are quite vulnerable, people are so dependent on others, people feel that they lost their autonomy, they lost control over their life. Illness is a situation where you occasionally lose control over your lives. So, under such situations what is more required is not a rational approach, but a, an approach which is fostered by care, which is actually rooted in care. Again the situations that make people dependent on others and not a mere objective respect to other people. Respect to other person is a very rational process, it can, that is the way it is understood by the deontological tradition. But here you should respect other people, but the respect should be demonstrated by means of respecting the other person's emotions as well. So, rather than the word respect, the word empathy would be more relevant in this context. So, it is not just a mere respect to the other people, to the patient, the person of the patient, but rather empathizing with the patient, feelings of other people, one should be sensitive to the feelings of other people. So, we will wind up this lecture here. So, this lecture made an attempt to understand the care ethics perspective by contextualizing it in the broader context of uh, feminist criticism, feminist critic of uh, medical institution on the one hand and also ethical reflections on the other hand. So, we will wind up this lecture now, thank you.